Hello, 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 and welcome. This is the Texas is Live. I am Shane Moore. And I am Sue Allen. And we welcome you. Glad you're here. Tonight, we will be talking about um, a very interesting, fascinating, incredible subject and new news, uh, new updates to um, our last episode that we had talking about quantum entanglement um this is um this is groundbreaking to say say the least uh, it's just uh, gosh i can't even begin to to uh, comprehend it but it's very exciting and um one thing is um that it it has to do with uh consciousness and the world around us and the world within us and uh so it's all around us yeah all all around us everywhere reality is is truly stranger uh than fiction <laughs> yes it, it is um i'm i'm really really pumped because it's it's you know something that that i uh you know thought that i had uh considered or you know thought about and uh, which it was, but it's it's that and more, uh, a lot more, and it's just incredible. And there's two different you know stories, um, news that um, one is about the uh, you know possibility or the probability, I should say, of a mirror universe to our own, which um, right. we will read read that article it's um at uh oak ridge uh right and they basically you know happened because they were doing an experiment and up against you know a, a wall or whatnot and they were losing like protons right or electrons <laughs> and they and they knew there was no place for them to go so then they started thinking with more you know tests that came out the same that the possibility is that they're actually going uh, through the wall into a mirror universe. Yeah, yeah, they were and losing, actually, um, uh, you know, particles, and so it was really weird. And then, then they said, "Hey, you know, this is this is what it might be," and lo and behold, they're now working on they said that it would take take about a week to um do the the actual test and then a few months to research it and everything get all the details to did you see what what date it was the experiment was i'll was done i'll, on? I'll uh, check what it year? just a minute um okay well i'm 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 not even sure that they're that they've even started it yet because it's um there um it's it was in in the news yesterday so uh, okay yeah so. right They're, yeah that's why right in the beginning getting everything ready yeah so so I mean, that's gonna take take a lot of time to um how you figure out what's um what the deal is because there's there's a lot of, i mean it's just like cern uh, you know i mean there's 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 so much that takes takes place during their tests and everything that that they just have to i guess you know test it from every angle and um so yeah you know what when all, all this started when it was stern and and, and it, you started we started going into like uh gang stalking you know electromagnetic warfare voice of skull all all this crazy stuff and especially CERN, I, I always kept thinking of the book, um, The Tenth Insight. Mm -hmm. do, do you remember? The Tenth Insight, that, that, that was from the same, uh, it was part of the... Yeah, uh, and there was some energy generators. Yeah, and it was just that, what I remember, I want to read it again, but there was like these generators or these factories that they were doing something with energy that was really bad. And, and it was like, uh, you know, there had to be heroes had to come and, you know, it was, a, it was really good. And I think the 11th Insight came out, too. But it's really funny how it goes along with what we've been talking about with the Kabbalah. 
and ten, you know, being um, the binary digit right. in a computer. You know, everything that we're talking about, ten, you know, being completion. You know, um, I don't know. It's kind of exciting how it all seems to kind of tie, but everything keeps going back to the Kabbalah. It sure does, and and it's um, that's exactly what it's based on. Um, it's 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 in incredible i mean it, it it is incredible how that um that quantum you know physics um as well as er- everything else is explained not not only explained but well i should say not only explained by the kabbalah but the kabbalah is also a part of it a part of uh, you know, a part of reality itself, which is very strange, but it's like, or is it, or is it a map of reality? Well, and how, well, and it's, how to, it's a change reality and mold reality. It it is that, but it's also a part of it. It's um, it is uh, it's hard to explain. Uh, it's, it's hard to even comprehend, but. Um, Hey, Nazarene, glad you joined us. Hope you're doing Hi, well. Hi, Nazarene. But um, it's, it's like uh, Dr. James Gates, um, the uh, you know, physicist, Sylvester James mm-hmm. Gates Jr., actually. Um, he, he found, um, found during research that he was doing into string theory, he found on the um, subatomic level, he actually found code, I mean written code, mm. and it was it was um, computer code. It was a type of computer code, just like the wow. the computer code that you use in your browser. I'm not kidding. I mean, you you can YouTube it, <laughs> you can YouTube it, and he he said. Um, he said, you know, he said, I've, I've been doing this 30 years. And he said, he said, I never thought that I would be sitting here. He said, um, uh, you know, even considering that I might be living in the matrix like the movie. And <laughs> they're just, you know, everybody's draw, jaws just hit the ground. And they're like, what, what are you saying? And he says, what I said. He said, that he said it is um uh, neil tyson neil degrasse tyson he said are mm-hmm. you saying that there is is um is computer code literally written into the fabric of reality itself and he says that's exactly what i'm saying he said i'm not just you know saying that it's written he said that it's written in it, he said it is also a part of it, which would blend a lot of, um, to lean towards the Kabbalah because that's what the Kabbalah, uh, basically says is that, that it's, it, it describes it, but it's also a part of it. And so he, he, uh, you know, said that, that this code that he found, he said, it's, it's like zeros and ones. It's like binary code. He says, but it's actually a very specific code. He said, a uh, very specific, like a very specific computer code from the 1940s called the Shannon code, uh, which was um, a. We have to, we have to put a link to um, to this video. Do what now? I, we have to put a link in the description box. Okay. To the yeah. video that you're talking about. Right. Um, Hi, Elaine. But, uh, hey, Elaine. But, um, yes, yes, he said that that it it was an advanced form of the Shannon Codes, which are advanced hmm. to, to begin with. And, th- and these were back in the 40s. Oh, okay. Well, be careful driving. <laughs> um, the, uh, you know, Shannon Codes from... Claude, Claude Shannon wrote the codes, came up with the codes or whatever. And um, so 
what what he did is took these codes and um, uh, put them in in a computer and um, printed them out to where they um, were made and made an image um, and um, actually he made three images and believe it or not the first one looks like looks like a spaceship like a flying saucer okay mm-hmm. and uh it it has um let me um let me look at this uh real real quick uh, it it looks like um looks like a flying saucer but it's it's um uh, more than more than that it has you know color and the code was written i i guess kind of like th- that um the uh you know messages that you know some people get um there's there's the you know pixel rate and there's the um the flicker rate you would call it right and it's 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 not just a uh, you know picture of course of course i mean that's what we see it's all in in code i mean it's all encoded we we just can't see how how it's you know written most of us can't i mean a a, a you know, programmer would but it's um definitely written but he uh you know put this code in and it came out like a flying saucer what what it looks like uh there were like <laughs> yellow and everything but then there's two more and one well they both look like um look like some type of human figure standing in in an x shape like like a long x shape like with their arms crossed it's very strange and uh i'll i'll try to um put the uh you know pictures on our website at um www.texasist-podcast.com and um but yeah it it really looks like that that there was um there was a message that that was encoded into reality itself that um has the has the picture or um i guess you would call it like a signature like hey this is me and um very strange i mean i'm i'm talking not just strange but eerie just really really (laughs) um and i'll um i'll talk more about that um and read read what uh james james gates wrote oh okay let's see i've got it here um got multiple devices here and was looking on the wrong one but it's um he i'm talking i mean this guy is like really really intelligent i mean you know genius and he said he was he was literally scratching his head going what the hell's going on he says you know he says he says i i really never thought that that i would encounter something like this i mean that's how mind-blowing it is but you know what it even gets it even gets more strange i mean it, it gets stranger not 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 even stranger it gets uh i just i just hope that you know that when when you hear it that you um like me you don't um think like wow i can't you know keep up i'm might might as well not listen because you know what no one can keep up i mean we we can't even begin to 
conceive it. I mean, com comprehend it. And that's how incredible it is. I mean, but there's a, there's, you know, something going on. There's, there's a shift, I guess you could say. And I know that people have said this in the past. You know, they've said it for years. I've heard it. There's, there's a shift going on in consciousness and blah, blah, blah. And, and I've heard that for, I don't know, 25 years. And it's like, well, not so much. But right now, and, and right the now it's, it's uh, taking place. I mean, it really is. And we will talk about that and more when we come right back. In three and Elaine, you drive careful. So, um, yes, drive careful, and we'll be right back. So we will see you then. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're back. Okay. Hello, um, hello. We we are talking about um, we're talking about news, new updates in the world of quantum physics, um, consciousness, and the Kabbalah. Hey, Jacob. Believe it or not. Hey, Jacob. Glad you joined us, brother. Um, so this this goes to. Um, this uh, uh, you know goes on, and um, into many deep, well beyond deep 
things and um uh, and it's uh it's just amazing how how this um it's let's see well first so we can bring it back to um the Kabbalah right you know I'm, and the Kabbalah um has the the general twenty two paths um of the tree of life but like you said, there's actually 32. Right. So, but. Right, 32, yeah, which would, um, uh, you know, 33 is the um, highest number in Freemasonry. 33 is a special number. It's, um, you know, you have the 33rd parallel where a lot of strange things happen. A lot of, um, I don't know, it's it's just very very weird um how how that you know 33 um Jesus supposedly lived 33 years um Mount Hermon in um in northern Israel on the Israeli Lebanese and Syrian border uh borders is at the 33rd uh, you know, parallel, uh, both um, latitude and longitude, 33.33 33 degrees, 33.33 .33 degrees, both latitude and longitude. So that's unusual yeah, that because that's really. that's where where the Bible says that the watcher angels were located and that they're the ones that chose to come down and and basically have sex with human women and have children with them and which gave rise to the nephilim and that's at 33 again 33.33 .33 degrees latitude 33.33 .33 degrees longitude so that's i don't believe that's coincidence i think that's you know i was telling us something but as far as the mirror universe, July the 4th, 2019, scientists are hunting for a mirror universe and attempting to open portals into it. And I thank Elaine for sending this to me, this article. And um, she said, <laughs> don't open Pandora's box. And... Mm -hmm. I'm saying the same thing, Are you know, you it's mm -hmm. pretty, yeah, yeah, it would not be good to open a box you can't close, you know, don't open something you can't close, don't chase what you can't catch, and don't catch what you can't handle. <laughs> um, Jacob, you say, 33 is the highest number, you know, of my great grandfather, my grandfather, all my uncles on my mom's side are Masons, all 33rd degree. Right. 33rd degree is the highest number, uh, is the highest degree um, that's that's known uh, publicly. I, I don't know about um, about privately. I mean, I, uh, my my dad is a 32nd degree mason my grandfather was my great grandfather was and um so um but yeah you know, we're we're going to um uh talk about the masons tonight too so yeah just just everybody buckle your seatbelt <laughs> uh, but so it says here um imagine a world where everything is exactly the same as this one but no one knows of its, its existence even though it could be staring you right in the face these are called mirror universes a parallel world in a different time space continuum while this prospect may seem a bit fetched to, be, to many leah leah broussard believes that these parallel universes are actually very real in fact, she, along with her colleagues at Oak Ridge National Laboratory in Tennessee, is on the hunt for a mirror universe and plans on opening portals to them. It says, uh, enter universe portals. Broussard is attempting to open a portal to a parallel universe by what she calls oscillation, 
which would eventually lead her to mirror matter. To conduct these experiments during the upcoming summer, Broussard will send a beam of subatomic particles down a 50-foot tunnel past a powerful magnet and into an impenetrable wall. Uh, so what's the point of that? Well, if the setup is just right, some of those particles will transform into mirror image versions of themselves, allowing them to tunnel right through the wall. If it works, this would be the first proof of a mirror universe. The whole experiment will take around a day, but analyzing the data will take many weeks afterward. Either way, it won't be long before the results are published. And it says, assuming they actually exist, these mirror worlds would have their own laws of mirror physics in its own mirror history, believe it or not. And it says, oh. while there isn't going to be an evil doppelganger of everyone on Earth, scientists might find mirror atoms and mirror rocks, maybe even mirror planets and stars. They may even form an entire world similar to this one, but completely cut off from it. Now, my question is, is... Um, it says, while there isn't going to be an evil doppel doppelganger of everyone on Earth, I mean, how do you know? How do you know? Because it hasn't been discovered yet. So, that's, that's, that's very, you know, presumptuous to, to assure everyone that yeah, there's no chance of that when you don't even know if it exists. And and if it does, you don't know anything about it. So how can you say that? I don't know. <laughs> Just very strange. Um, anyway, it says, uh, how did this come about? Many people would be wondering how such an idea would even come around in the first place. As with many scientific discoveries, it started with nothing more than a tiny discrepancy which the majority of people would disregard. Researchers found that neutrons created in particle beams, similar to the one Broussard will use, last 14 minutes and 48 seconds, on average, before decaying into protons. However, neutrons stored in a laboratory bottle seem to break down a bit faster in 14 minutes and 38 seconds. That's all there is to it. 10 seconds. It might not sound like much, but the difference should be zero as all neutrons are exactly the same and they should decay at exactly the same rate no matter where they are or what they're doing this links into the idea from about a decade ago of Anatoly Serebrov of, Peterbur of Petersburg Nuclear Physics Institute in Russia Serebrov came up with the idea that ordinary neutrons sometimes cross over into the mirror world and transform into mirror neutrons where they would no longer be detectable as if they had vanished. Broussard goes on to explain that this is why the life of the neutrons would look wrong and shorter. They would have actually been disappearing from the test equipment while the researchers were studying them, giving the impression of them decaying faster. What if mirror universes were real and Broussard and her team did find them? What if they did manage to open a portal? The world would never be the same again, and everyone would see it completely differently as they do now. Who knows what waits for us on the other side? So, that's it. And is who knows what waits for us if there is indeed a mirror universe? And I keep, you know, going back to... Hey, Mama, Hi, Mona. I, I keep, you know, going back to... Um, what the uh, you know, Bible says, you know, the Apostle Paul, he says, um, he says, for now, I, I, you know, see through a window darkly, but then I shall see clearly and know as, as, as I am known. So I'm just wondering if, if, that might be um, him describing a a um, mirror universe. No idea, but it's certainly some, something to you know think about. I mean, it's it's where everything would be reversed, just like a mirror. You know, um, Jacob, you say, or there will be an exact evil doppelganger. Yeah, you know, there's 
Well, the sh- show uh, Stranger Things came on, and when they go to the other world, it's a bad place. It's black and it's dark, and exactly. it's where all the all the evil entities live, and they're trying to get into this dimension from from that world. Exactly, and and I just find it very strange that this. You know, says in, uh, you know, this is um, Science Magazine, or um, it says, um, let's see where it says that. Um, While there isn't going to be a um, mirror doppelgangers, mirror evil doppelgangers of, of, uh, you know, everyone... While there isn't going to be an evil doppelganger of everyone on Earth, scientists might find mirror atoms and mirror rocks. And I'm thinking, how can you say that? I mean, that's just crazy. So, so it's Jason, like Jason was also saying that there's, um, or Jacob, I'm sorry, was saying that there's a 64th degree in masonry, and that George Bush Senior actually is considered. And I just put there's I. I put a thing up for numerology on the number 64. Okay, thank so, you. Because it's kind of a special number. Yep, <clears throat> that's the number yeah. of the cube. That's very interesting, Jacob. Um, yeah, I, I don't... No, I, I just I found my great-grandfather's sword, and it's, you know, real gold, and, you know, it has to be clean, but it has all the symbolism and stuff on it, and I had no idea and before my mom died. She gave it to me. Um, well, there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, masonry, uh, you know, Freemasonry symbols everywhere. I mean, it's, uh, it's just, uh, and it's, it's no, uh, you know, I, it's no secret that Freemasonry is based on the Kabbalah. I mean, plain and simple. It's just, um, that's the that's that's the truth and and it seems like that everything is based on the Kabbalah just like the um, the uh, you know different you know symbols and that's uh, you know one thing about this this world you know system signs and symbols rule the world not words or laws And that is a quote by Confucius, believe it or not. Signs and symbols rule the world, not words nor laws. And that is correct. It is um, very true. Because um, when when you look at, um, say, you look at the Google... Look, look at the Google symbols. Um, you have the Google Mail. Okay, well, that looks like a letter M, a red M on a white background. But when you put it to the Masonic Royal Arch apron, that's pretty much a Masonic apron. When you Right, and the fact that when McDonald's was made, it wasn't made as this great, nice, nutritious place. It was actually, you know, very unhealthy place where they figured a lot of poor people would be going, which people have talked about being part of a eugenics program. Mm. Possibly. Yeah, yeah, there, it's it's uh, you know, even worse than that. I mean, there's been, you know, something, some things that have been said about McDonald's that uh, it's crazy. Um it's very strange. Um, yeah, we definitely won't go into that, or I won't, because it's just it. It, it is really. Um, I don't know. I mean, how much <laughs> if if there's any truth to it or whatever. But um, so I'm not going to comment on it. But yeah, it deals with McDonald's and uh, different things like that, but I think that it's just a bunch of, um... You mean with eugenics programs? No. No, it's, um... something else. I mean, it's... 
it's just uh, there was a man that um, that that really had a problem with uh, <laughs> with certain people, and I think he was, I think he might have been um, just just really really angry at a certain group, and so he decided to. Um, I don't know, not not just McDonald's, but basically a lot of different fast food places. And but what's what's strange is that this this man was uh, killed um, like a month after this after he did this um, interview. And uh, I don't know, but uh, that's. That's something for another show. But this, uh, there's there's a, a Facebook app logo, and it is the same logo for the Freemason uh, Masonic logo for Tubal Cain. There's the um, mm. Google Chrome logo, and it's the same logo for the Divine King sign. I don't know if that has anything to do with Freemasonry, but... The divine king sign is uh, supposedly six six six. There's the Google GPS logo, and it looks very much similar to the Eye of Providence. There's the Google Play logo, and it is the uh, maybe like the pyramid capstone, but the way that it is. Um, that the lines are, it is actually uh, the sigil of Lucifer, and that's that's no joke. I mean, it is uh, Google Play. If you look at it, and you turn it uh, point down, which um, which it would be. Do you know that they have a program on the Fox Network, or or they did, and now it moves. I believe to Netflix, but it's called Lucifer. Yes, yes. Have you seen it? Have you seen any of the commercials? Yes, I've seen some of the commercials, and I've seen seen some of the, I've seen a few of the episodes, and it's mm-hmm. uh, just to see what what the deal was, you know, and it's yeah, it's nothing like. Um, Nothing like Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I'll tell you that. Sabrina the, the Teenage Witch is like the real deal. I mean, it is it is Monica. crazy. <clears throat> like, I was going to start watching that. I haven't seen it too for, yet. Mona watches it. Oh, okay. Um, but, Mona, Mona, did you watch The Preacher? So I don't know... Um, I bet she has if she's watched. Like I guess say, I don't watch much, much, you know, TV. Um, we, we watched, um, oh. we watched the uh, Black Mirror last, last night. Ah, she's addicted to it. <laughs> yeah, the Black Mirror. Oh my gosh, I need to start, I need to watch it again because you were explaining it to me and I just forgot. I didn't even remember. Well, the, uh, and the, the idea is, 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 this was, uh, the, um, this was the first, I think it was the first episode of season five or something like that. And it, it was the, um, gosh, what, what was the, what was the name of, of that? Um, what I was saying? Of the episode, um, Bander, um, ba- uh, Bander something. Um, let me find it. And... That one was was very very good. I mean, I I really liked it, but the second and third they were so different, and I'm, I'm I was like, yeah, I just I just couldn't do it, you know. I just could not do it. Um, let's see. Um, okay, Bandersnatch Interactive. About the guy who is being controlled and can choose to do specific things 
over again. It's like he can he can go back in time and do these things over um, for a different outcome. But then he finds out that he's being controlled. That he has he has no um, he has no free will. He only thinks he's making a choice when the choice is being made for him, which is we what we talked about this. We what, just had an episode right. and I read an article about that. Our last episode was about the illusion of free will. And then you told me to watch black mirror. And so mm-hmm. you, you can, you can imagine how, how I was, you know, I'm going, man, this is, this is exactly what I was talking about. Is, How synchronistic. <laughs> yes. And it Bam. it went on. The number nine. It went on um, so much that I, I was thinking, you know, in, in the context of this show, I'm thinking, okay, did I write this and then go back and, you know, completely forget, you know, was it a race that I wrote this? Because... That's how close it was. I mean, it was like I was reading my own notes. I mean, you can ask Mona. I'm sitting there, and I'm, like, checking off different things as they happen. And it's like, wow, I can, this is incredible. And, um, but the second and third, and they, they, they were just like Twilight Zone, just your average Twilight Zone, um, you know, shows to me. But the first one was was really a mind bender, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. Is is the um, is as far as like we talked about last last time um, about do you have free will? And you know most people say, well, of course, you know. But how do you know? There, well, you know, I I choose. I choose what I want to choose, and how do you know that it's it's your uh, you know um, your choice, you know? And, it, um, it reminds me of those books when I was little, where you'd have the alternate endings. I love those books. I just I couldn't get enough of them. Right. I think I read every single one that was out. I was so fascinated by that that you know you could go back and do it again. Right. Yeah. And and uh, for a, for a, for a while there was um, movies that that um, you could you know do that too, um, where where in the extras um, you could choose the um, you know you could go to the alternate ending and um, which I thought was 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 cool, but uh, but. Yes, it's yeah. You can even start a whole have whole episodes on the Black Mirror episode and the implications. Oh yeah, because there's just oh, I mean, I cried through some of them. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. I been watch. I was sick at the time, so I was just binge watching them. It's um, it it was just uh, you know, it was just incredible, and. Which which it really leads you to really ponder and really think about um, um, just you know what is um, I mean how would we know if we truly had free will how um, would we there's no way we could know because if 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 we don't have um, um, free will and and we don't have choice it's just the illusion then you could say well okay I'm going to make a choice and I'm going to change it well even you changing it could be the actual it, it could be part of the code it could be written that you change it so there's no way of knowing so you know I'm, I mean I know that that's going to upset a lot of people but oh so all we would care about is how to get a really good experience in that process and how to make sure that the collective is ha- having as good of experience or as possible, too. 
we all want the world to be going good and all of us to be fruitful and have a good time. Yes. It's Learn like, how to navigate through the matrix. It's but, like, you know, everybody says, uh, you know, um, every, everybody wants to, to go to heaven. evil overlord. But nobody wants to die. Huh? You know, it's just, it's just everybody wants to go to heaven, but, but nobody wants to die. Right. Oh, but, well, um, there's some people, there's a lot of crazies out there. There's, the suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States. Mm. There's a lot of people going out. But um, this, this was, uh, you know, talking about this, um, there, there was a, um, gosh, I can't, I can't think of it, but this, this um, guy um, was, was a computer game maker, you know, whatever you call that, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> back in 1984, and so, so he was making these games that back then we thought would be like awesome and you know, like Atari or whatever. And so, but, and he, he, he had put in that game where you could choose, you could choose one thing or you could choose another thing, like two choices. But what he didn't know was that that his life was a game. There was, he was actually, there There was someone playing him and they were, cho they were making a choice just like he had programmed his game that, that he was, you know, selling for a lot of money to this, you know, company that he was hired mm -hmm. to work for. So, oh. so it's, it's a game Within a game, within a Was that game. the one that was kidnapping people? No. No, I think that was the third one, which I didn't care for at all. It it just didn't make any he, sense. He was he put them on, like, a spaceship or something, right? I didn't see that one. No, this... I I saw, saw the one with the taxi driver or... That was yeah, I gotta go back and up, watch them. And it just... It was just... In my opinion, it was just a waste of time. It didn't make any sense, and I just didn't like it. The first one was great. The second one was okay, but um, but the first one just really, really. I mean, I could watch it again and again. So, uh, but uh, but the um, but that's that's just it. Is it's it's been said that this world that our reality is a dream within a dream. Okay, mm -hmm. Mona, you said it's the very first episode, but what season? Because I think it's season five that it's the first, because I looked up the very first, uh, you know, the first episode, and it was not that one. So I don't know. I think that uh, it's like, like in its fifth season or something like that so but uh, but the um, that's that's just it is um, and, and it's just amazing that that's what we had on that was our whole discussion last show was if if we are in a simulation if we are being um, being played like avatars or puppets and we mm -hmm. we have no control over what takes place and you know what you know happens or this or that basically loss of free will so so what happens then and um that's that's what the show was is is he was making the game and it was it was like that there were he would have moments where 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 he would uh okay i got quiet again i don't know what okay um you said what was the question uh the question was is you said it's the very first episode i looked up the very first one and it it was not that one I believe it was the first 
of season five was the one that um, that we watched last night. So, um, so anyway, um, no idea, but that one was called, um, um, the interactive, um, one, I'm just, yeah, so, let's see, I'm trying to find, okay, here we go. What now? I heard they're going to do another Twilight Zone, too. Okay, say that one more time and uh, put your mouth right up to the phone because very muffled. Sorry, um, I I heard they're also going to do another Twilight Zone series. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah. That would be good. They did one in the 90s or something, but I never even knew about it. Hmm. I saw it. Um, they have episodes on uh, YouTube for free. Okay. Um, let's see. I found the... So, the, the National Anthem. You see that one? The very first one? Season one? It, no, no, no. This is, this is season five. Oh, this you, was you the, watched all the way up? To- no, 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 I didn't. I thought I was watching the very first one but it was season five it was the first okay. episode of season five. Oh, okay got you well yeah. when you do watch the first one and we're gonna do any spoiler alert but the very first one um there's like chatter that this comes from like a, a true story so just mm. watch out okay um <laughs> just let me know okay when you watch it but um Here's some um, here's some uh, you know quotes from um, from the um, from the uh, you know second discovery or news in in you know quantum physics is um, is it says now um, it says now many except particles do not exist prior to observation just in the state of a wave okay that's what we talked about. Um, last show about how how it's a wave until the observer observes it and then it becomes it becomes a particle okay Mm -hmm. and it says um quantum probability is not the probability of where the atom is it is the objective probability of where you or anybody will find it the atom wasn't someplace until it was observed to be there now, whoa, let me read that again because that yeah. that's huge. Quantum probability is not the probability of where the atom is. It's the objective probability of where you or anybody will find it. The atom wasn't some place until it was observed to be there. So what what that's saying is, is that there if were a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to see it, does it make a sound? Well, this is saying that that there was nothing there. There was no tree there until you looked and and you put the tree there. Mm-hmm. That there was not even a probability of the tree being there that you provided the probability and you provided right. the tree itself um, right. to to where previously it was you know that that there was just this probability and of a tree or something else and you determine what's there but um, Werner Heisenberg said the atoms or elementary particles themselves are not real. They form a world of potentialities and possibilities rather than one of things or facts. Now, that that is... I mean, he's saying the atoms or elementary particles themselves are not real. 
Okay, what are we made up of? Atoms. What are atoms made up of? Subatomic particles or elementary particles. He's saying the atoms or element, elementary particles themselves are not real. They form a world of potentialities or possibilities rather than one of things or facts. So what does that tell you? I mean, we said last show that the mass of an atom is like 99.99% empty. And he says they're not even real. What are they? I believe that they are their consciousness, their thoughts. Now, does thought do, does, does your consciousness have... So again, thoughts are things, and Jesus actually said that. So right, he said right, right. To actually think of a thing, and you know, and he's using the metaphor uh, with adultery, but what he's really talking about right. is passing down knowledge. Passing is, down is, is, he said that if you even look upon a woman to commit adultery with her, you basically, you might as well have, you know, you did it, you know, because thinking about it, he says, you know, as far as, as it being a sin or transgressing the law, he said, you might as well have actually physically did it because then you did it in your mind, which he's saying that your mind, what goes on in your mind is just as right and then you get and then you get back to being a program and is it a movie and if you think about it you know who programs you right well it's it's like you know we could vary or this is a con this is a theory but um why were were we born in sin you know why were we born well, th- uh, but with, they don't really mean sin. Why were we born with a sinful nature? And I'm just playing devil's advocate. Because there's entropy. No. When we, you have... Well, true. When you're, in, when you're in a physical world and you want the pleasures and you want to feel things, it has to be in a world of... You have to pay a price and everything has to be balanced. But... Uh, but, 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 but you can... He need to keep the balance. That's what man was here for, was to keep the balance, was given as a custodian. Said, here, I'm giving you this, come take care of it. You know, one day I'm going to come back. <laughs> I'm well, going to check and see how well, you did. <laughs> like like um, Einstein said, I don't believe God plays dice with the universe. And when the Bible says that he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-present, that tells me that he's in charge. Uh, like, well, it, it, well, he's ninety-nine point nine the, percent. There's just, he's, just it means he's a dimension above because he can see his, he can see time. You know where time ends. Well, it's it's like um, like all knowing, all powerful, all present. Then he or she or it knows what we're going to do before we do and and um knows what you know temptations that we're going to face my theory is 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 that we were we were born um with a sinful nature or you know prone to sin or whatever because um there would be because without that there would be no need for a savior i mean if nobody sinned you know and everybody was without sin no you're just starting you're explaining how to start an economy economy no. if no one sinned if no one lost a buck then you can start the economy it's telling you that the economy is um is uh it's uh Cannibalistic. Well, cannibal. Can and and, and Cain and Abel. I'm it's just a, simply saying that it's an economic. I'm just no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that 
if that with within the program, if you want to call it that, there mm-hmm. um, an all powerful, all knowing, all present God, an Almighty God. I believe could have written a perfect program. Um, it's it's been he said created, well, or he created his own universe. A lot of religions and they believe that the path, you know, once you kind of get completely spiritually actualized, then you go on to create your own universe, and people will choose to go to that universe that want to have that experience. But right. first, you got to be able to experience. You know, going through other people's universe and, and what, getting the perspectives you need. What I'm, uh, you know, talking about is, is you know, Bell's, you know, theorem, is that if, uh, you know, he he, uh, you know, theorized that this was a program where illusion, where choice was an illusion. So if if you, you know, made a choice to sin it was it was pre-programmed it was predestined and even the bible talks about predestination it talks about yeah you know that jesus was was um was headed to the cross before the foundation of the world so it was like the program was already written to save you know sinners that hadn't even been created yet on on a planet that hadn't even been created yet so i I really, really believe that that it is a program, but within any program, it's like absolute power equals absolute boredom. So there had to be there has has to be a a sliver of free will, and I think it's very, very slim, but pro- pro- probably like the the um, mass of the atom, like point oh one percent. I mean, but that's the that's the that's the problem in the in what would otherwise be a perfect program. I mean, there would be no um, there would be no quote unquote sin or uh, transgression or whatever if. If it wasn't for that, because um, how could how could a a perfect God create sin? I mean, how how could that be? I mean, it's just it doesn't make sense. But I'm, I mean, that's that's my theory. But the well, we're we're he, we're here to learn some harsh lessons lessons i can tell you that I mean, oh definitely whatever whatever we do if, you know you know i've, I've thought sometimes are we like in training yes, for a are. job or another or another absolutely place and you know we're we're asleep someplace in the pod and we're yes. having our yeah. training oh, oh 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 you you are on you you you're on fire because man i'll i have this right here okay and I was I was going to get to it, but I'm just going to you know say it now. Is um, is the the way that that this um, that things happen, such as um, there's uh, you know certain uh, you know certain things, certain variables that take place within the universe that um, mm-hmm. that. The conclusion no. is inescapable. The, uni- the universe behaves as virtual reality. And um, if the universe... No, well, we, 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 do, we, can't keep, we can't say we know all this. But they keep changing. They said that they knew and thought that dogs were colorblind. Now they're saying they don't know. They think that dogs can seek some colors. What what, so what I'm saying come is, out. is I'm not saying that this is true. I'm saying what they're right, saying. Right. I'm I am relaying their theory. Right. And I'm and I'm expressing. No, I'm just stating that. Yeah. I'm yeah, expressing my theory, my opinion. As I've said before, right. nothing that that I say on here 
of course I cannot say this is this is fact you know I know this like um, like some idiot that you know talks oh well I I know when you die this happens oh really well you're still breathing so you know explain that explain you know tell me how you know when you know you're not dead um, what the afterlife is like so well you know I died and I was there a few seconds okay well who said you really died I mean is that really dead <laughs> you know I mean and I'm talking about uh, like James Von Prahl or whatever or John Edwards you know they're talking about oh you know they speak matter of factly about life after death and I'm like oh man what ah uh, frauds just you know yeah and i said that my opinion um but their opinion is the conclusion is inescapable the universe behaves as virtual reality um and um it um because um they they were talking about how that um, certain things could not be programmed into a computer, not even a quantum computer. That um, that it would have to be. So talk about synchronicity. What I was just going to read to you: quantum data got denser than ever. To build quantum computers, scientists will have the first figure will have to first figure out how to manipulate and effectively store information with quantum objects. In 2018, the researchers hit a milestone in that effort, packing 18 qubits of quantum information into just six photons. A hmm. new record. Hmm. Well, well, um, this this uh, you know says um, says that. That as far as as the um, you know theory of rel- relativity that nothing can mm-hmm. travel or exceed the speed of light, um, well, and and it does in quantum mechanics, in quantum physics it does, and so they're saying that that um, that it can't be. Um, can't be part of a computer program because the the computer itself runs on what I mean it runs on electricity which is light and so their conclusion is the universe is being simulated in a mind which when when I read that it's like a hologram boom and, and everything's inside it's been more of a computer or be like a computer. Uh, a bio computer a bi- hologram. A, a bio photon or bio frequency. It's it would be. That, well, we have to know that, our senses. That would just be there's another frequencies way. Frequencies for our smell. There's frequency for touch. There's frequency for for taste. There's frequency for what would be the other one? Smell. Well, um, right. I, I just um, it's my theory that we each have our own unique bio frequency, and um, as far as the as our you know consciousness, this is um, this is uh, you know something that that I read um, says uh, we we have bio photons. <laughs> You know, a photon is 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 light, is light particle. Um, our bio photons transmit our consciousness and information. Think t- TV, radio waves. Think in terms of frequency and vibration. What are bio photons? They're light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Um, you know, let your light shine, and um, so. But this information in our biophotons 
can actually be captured and stored in a computer digitally, believe it or not. Because because it is a frequency, because it is um, you know something that can now be measured, can be picked up and measured, that frequency, our thoughts do have mass. Just like you said, you know, you said, you know, Jesus said, you know, if you think it, you might as well have done it. Well, there you go. It's the same thing we're, we're learning with the observer, uh, the observer effect. And that's, and, and it has everything to do with, we create our reality to some well, extent. Well, I really, well, I really can't even We know that, that we know much. that we have, I know we have choice that I wouldn't spend so much time uh trying to make it feel like we don't have choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, well, that's just it. Is, is, and this is something that, that, um, that, uh, you know, several of the, you know, physicists have, you know, said, the, uh, you know, quantum, you know, physicists have, have said that, like, um, e, Elon Musk, he said, said, um, he said, it's like one in a billion chance that we are living in base reality, in real reality. He said, um, he said, but there's no way of knowing. He says, because any test we do will be in the confines and according to the rules of the simulation. And he's right. Right. Because we have to observe it to put it together. So if, if, if we are in a sim- simulation, there's no way we can prove it. There's no way. And there, there has to be an original observer. Yes, and that would be, that would be the mind that it's being simulated in or that it's being observed in, which is what this says. The universe is being simulated in a mind. A mind has elements of integrated information states and also processes information, something that a computer, even a quantum computer, doesn't have. A mind has both. It has elements of integrated information states and also processes information. A mind different from the brain and a computer is an immaterial substance and doesn't require matter to exist. Now, what happened supposedly at the Big Bang? There came this entire universe out of nothing, right? No. Well, no, it came from a Big Bang. <laughs> but what was the Big Bang? It's been said nothing nothing preceded the Big Bang. What was the Big Bang? And that's what I'm saying. It, According to them, they, they don't know. They can't go back. Well, they don't but know, so so how how do they if not? If they can't go, if they can't go back to the, how do they know that it's not that it wasn't simulated in a mind, right. as an yeah, idea right. or a thought? And it right. says a mind different from the brain and a computer is an immaterial you being, substance. You are being mind. A mind different from the brain and a computer is an immaterial substance and doesn't require matter to exist. So, it could just, you know, and it's been said that, you know, that that's um, when, when we have that aha moment or we have that moment of creation, or, you know, cre- creativity, um, it's um, it's like we transcend. I don't know. It's like it's like a very we need to, special. Well, the many talk about you become awake in the dream. What now? You become aware. You, can you become hear awake you. in the. You become awake in the dream. Right, right, right. And that's that's a great feeling. I mean, that's that's like you know you. It's invigorating. I mean, it's just there's nothing like it. There's nothing like that aha moment when when you get that inspiration, when you get that answer, when you get that truth that you've been looking for, or or that con- confirmation that you've been looking for. Um, 
It says, so a mind, unlike a computer, doesn't require the existence of particles in a space-time continuum to be built upon. Um, so one can, ar- can also argue that it may not even be possible to simulate conscious beings in a computer, not fully conscious, but this is it. it, is given that it hasn't been demonstrated to be possible and consciousness may be more complex than just information processing. Oh, you think? I, I think that speaks for itself. It's, it's, it's much more than that. So this is it. The digital physics argument is premise one, simulations can only exist in a computer or in a mind. Premise two, the universe is a simulation. Premise three, a simulation on a computer still must be simulated in a mind. Premise four, therefore the universe is a simulation in a mind. Premise five, this mind is what we call God. Conclusion, therefore God exists, or the creator, or the source. You know, whatever you want to put there, but... And this... This is amazing because this is not, you know, theologians. It's not, you know, um, spiritual, you know, people that are... Kind of like, what, like Westworld. <laughs> this, this is... These are physicists. I mean, these are scientists. They, they have an answer for everything. But they, they have come to the conclusion that, therefore, God exists. There, there is a creator because from what they've seen, what they have discovered has convinced them that it was not, it, it did not just happen to, you know, turn out the way it did. No, it's intelligent design beyond anything that we can even comprehend. And, um, there's a, a, you know what, there's a, you know when I was, uh, go ahead and say I I was asking God this question once and it was when um, my kids were really young I was still um, always still prayed to God every day you know not going to church every day and stuff but Mm -hmm. you know praying and I was asking God you know what time is I you know and just sitting there and I was meditating on it for like over an hour and I saw myself as a little kid and I saw myself in a tent and it's like how he opens the tent. You know how you talked about time, you know, if you, uh, if you bend the paper, mm-hmm. you have the shortcut, how you can go through the worm right. wormhole. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like all these cubicles or like space mm-hmm. and, and uh, math are the, or the illusions of them are what, as giving us that illusion of separation. Right. Like like cubicles were in cells. Mm-hmm. Prisms. Prisms. Of prisms. There's your photons, your light. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, um... So, it's so, it's so allegory. If you look at this world, it makes no sense. Right. People are not happy. People have to do shitty things. People have at, at their work. They're, or they don't even care or even pay attention. They don't care where things come from or how things are done. Or well, that's um, that's that's you know what I'm saying is that that our uh, the way that we define perfection. Um, it's um. What do you mean? Well, what what you mean what here, I'm saying on, here is, on on Earth? Yes, yes. What I'm saying yeah. is, is, is when we think of perfection, we think everything absolutely perfect. But what if perfection was actually um, something that we would accept, that we would believe, and that with with its um, imperfections. Which would be, um, which would be the result of the imperfections in 
every human being as far as as what we were programmed to do or what we chose even though that choice may be an illusion or a very very small percentage a very small percent of actual free will which is what i believe um what what if that is part of it I don't believe that. I think it's a bunch of, that's a cop-out. I think it's for a whole bunch of people are, that have just, are, are still out. They don't speak up. Well, that's true. You know? That's true. They got to support their family. They want the paychecks. They got loans. They Absolutely. don't care. Absolutely. And, and I've seen it. And I've seen nurses that will not go to a doctor that are so heavy or, like, purposely <laughs> setting it up so they have a heart attack and their heart just explodes. Mm-hmm. No coming back. No nothing. Well, gone. Well, um, because because of the crap that they see and what is impossible, impossible right. to treat people with any true care when they run through like a McDonald's drive-through. It is all absolutely moronic and crazy. Well, so to me, I know this has to be a dream. Well, uh, you know, this is what I'm saying is is that um, that the um, let me see here is. Um, let me see if I can. Okay. Um, well, internet's running rather slow tonight, so. Okay. Is um, this. It's right what did here. you say? I said it's. I said the internet's r- running kind of slow tonight, but I just. just uh, you found this. The architect speech from The Matrix, the movie. The Matrix Reloaded, number two. Um, if if you haven't read this, those of you listening, I would I would suggest that you do a Google search. The Architect's speech to Neo, The Matrix, and read it because it it is absolutely incredible. Um, the detail. And the depth that that this uh, small conversation <laughs> has, um, the Neo meets the creator, the builder, the architect that created the Matrix, which was the simulated world that he and everyone else thought was real. And there was like 99% or more of, of, the, of every human being thought that it still was, I mean, real. And they were a part of it. And Neo asked him, he says, why am I here? And the architect answers him and says, your life is the sum of a remainder of an unbalanced equation inherent to the programming of the matrix you are the eventuality of an anomaly which despite my sincerest efforts i have been unable to eliminate from what is otherwise a harmony of mathematical precision while it remains a burden assiduously avoided it is not unexpected and thus not beyond a measure of control which has led you inexorably here and Neo says, you haven't answered my question. And the architect says, quite right. Interesting, that was quicker than the others. Of course, Neo, he's asking himself, um, others, what others, you know? You know, what are you talking about? How many? And he says, the matrix is older than you know. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next, which in this case is the sixth version. Now that had been my theory before this well, before this well, movie because they, because science has talked about that there were there's been five major extinctions. Yes, but historically, but evidence of it. But I was talking that. about it before I even heard that. When I heard them them say mm-hmm. that they had found that there were five. And and I told a lot of people, and then they were coming to me saying, 
hey, they said what you said. And I'm, well, hey, yeah, you know. I, I, that's um, by that interview I sent you um, with that uh, channeler. I I was freaked out because she was saying a lot of the same stuff that I had said. No, <laughs> so I was like, well, geez, yeah. And I just happened upon that. Well, it's like a, like a you know, uh, Tesla and what was Part it? Part of the tree of Marconi? life. I mean, the tree of life. So we were talking about the Kabbalah. It's the web that connects everything. And each of us are born with a certain perspective. Right. A and certain, well, like a, I look at it like we're born, each of us is born with a certain mission. We owe something. There's something here that we have to do. No right. matter what. That's our job. And then we have, we have another part that's our own. But I think that people have got down here and got real stuck in their karma. And then they end up on a wheel, and they end up stuck on the same level, well, kind of like Groundhog Day. Well, uh, this um, this uh, you know goes on to the um, the uh, you know he uh, you know talks about the this is the sixth version, and Neo says there's only two possible explanations: either no one told me or no one knows. And the architect says, precisely, as you are undoubtedly gathering, the anomaly is systemic, creating fluctuations in even the most simplistic equations. And Neo says, choice, the problem is choice. And the architect says, now this is, this is very important. He says, yeah. the first matrix I designed was quite naturally perfect. It was a work of art, flawless, sublime, a triumph equaled only by its monumental failure. The inevitability of its doom is as apparent to me now as a consequence of the imperfection inherent in every human being. Thus, I redesigned it based on your history to more accurately reflect the varying grotesqueries of your nature. However, I was again frustrated by failure. I have since come to understand that the answer eluded me because it required a lesser mind or perhaps a mind less bound by the parameters of perfection. And then he talks about how the answer was stumbled upon by an intuitive program, which was the oracle. And that gets into another, you know, aspect yeah, I wanted of it. To, I never, yeah, I wanted to go in that with, that, that with you, because and get your take on that and the oracle and how that, like, well, plays in with the ar- architect. Well, to me, it's kind of like when uh, Mama and Papa. Well, yes, but those of you that that haven't seen it, you have ten seconds. Do not listen. But um, Morpheus. Spoiler alert! Yeah, spoiler alert. Throughout all three throughout the trilogy every thing Morpheus, Trinity the Oracle and even the Architect they're and, and Smith they're all Neo they're all part of his psyche they are in his mind it is Neo helping Neo it is Neo against Neo. And that's why that in the end, he he so peacefully and and so is is so relieved when he finally lets Smith supposedly win and take him over, because he knows the only way that he will ever defeat Smith is they both have to go because they are what. They're entangled. One, one they're one. Same, yeah. They're entangled. They're diametrically opposed, but they're still entangled. Have you ever felt like that? I mean, have you ever felt like that you are against you, and there's nothing you can do about it? You you can't escape it, no matter how hard you try. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we all just like your right your right and left hemisphere being put together totally different. That's right. So. So what happens? Then, then when, when you come to the realization, 
I'm not talking about suicide. I'm talking about what what is you know said in just about every religion, every spiritual discipline. What what has to go? What has to die? You know, you have to die to yourself. What, ego. What, ego. Ego. Lego. My ego. Yeah, that's right. The ego. Yourself. And see, Neo went through the whole thing. And he is the hero. And he is fighting, and he's fighting, and he's fighting. And he fights more and more and more. And then... It finally comes to him because of the oracle, which is part of his mind, part of his higher mind, his higher self, that is saying, everything that has a beginning has an end, Neo. And she, Smith, took her over. So it's actually her speaking through through Smith to finally get it through Neo's mind you have to die to yourself your ego you are you are fighting your reactive mind you are fighting yourself therefore it's you are diametrically opposed but you are you are never going to win and it's never going to defeat you you you're you're you're, you're going to fight your vote. Yes, you you are going to be in battle from forever unless you allow the um, which in the movie it was the machine god that had Neo in um, had Neo's body. Neo was in the Matrix. He was plugged into the Matrix when he was fighting Smith and everything. So what it was is if you die in the Matrix, you die in real life or, you know, your body dies. Morpheus said, you know, the body cannot survive without the mind. So, so what happens? He, he, um, he is in a different place. He, he is actually in the machine world, which would be somewhat like heaven. And he's talking to the machine god. And he says, um, Smith is you know coming to destroy this city, this world, just like he destroyed, you know, just like he took over the Matrix. He says, you can't stop him, but I can. Now, why would he say that to God, to the machine god? Because it's all him and on some level he knows it and what's what's probably the you know the most you know pivotal moment of the entire trilogy is the machine god says and if you fail and he looks up and says i won't and that's when he knows what 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 he has to do is is he has to right. he has to what sacrifice himself sacrifice his ego he has to die to himself and that's why that at the end when he allows smith to take him over only then can the machine god destroy smith by destroying neo and right. and when when he um, dies, when that, that would save the world and Trinity. Well, Trinity was already dead. Um, she died whenever they crashed into the machine world. Uh, oh, but, really? I didn't even remember yes. that. And yes. I blocked that out. Damn it! Yes, see how I blocked stuff out. But she told him. He said, "You know." He said, "I can't." You I know, blocked out the ending of Red Dawn too. He said, "said said I can't." You know, do it with without you. And she said, "Yes, you can." She said, "You've come this far." She said, "I've oh. seen what you can do." She says, "Now go do it." So he does. And um, but but when 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 he dies, he it 
it, you know, forms light. Light comes out of his mouth, his nose, uh, you know. It's just this, this, this bright light that just comes out, and that's what destroys Smith and all of the other clones. You know, he's turned everybody into himself. And um, so um, he, he uh, uh, you know, falls back, and his arms are outstretched like a cross. So, so there's the, the Christ, you know, Christ, you know, symbolism there. Look, and then, right. then when the, when the machine God sees that he's dead, he says, um, the machine God, the machine God says, it is done. It is finished. Just like, in, uh, Just like right, at the cross like in, uh, right. in the Bible, it is finished. The machine God says it is done, and you look and the rematri- the matrix reboots itself into a beautiful, you know. There's no more Smiths. There's no more, um, you know. And that is that is what what I think in a way happens is that that each cycle each time that it you know that we reach a certain point in technology mm-hmm. in this or that that our um in, imperfection that is inherent in every one of us some more than others um gets the best of us and or gets the best of them and it it just gets yeah, so you have, you have so, a, a a little light in there that can shine light for both right but We're some people that, that some light. some people are just like he says here he says um says it was perfect a work of art flawless sublime um he he says that some people would not accept it why because it was perfect and they knew that it was a program they knew that that it was you know that that, that it wasn't real so he had to he had to re redo the whole thing and include the imperfections include the grotesqueries as he puts it of your nature um you know, like the movie um what was it space odyssey 2001 that's the one with the evil computer right yes family Kubrick. but it they show the black screen mm-hmm. right in front of the monkeys before right. they start killing each other and mm-hmm. using tools right that they're showing you that something came down and showed them monkey steps. Why they say monkey see, monkey do. So Stanley Kubrick is saying that they were shown how. I mean, and the first time they used technology was to kill people and, and get food. Well, my question to that is: is who would show them? Would would it be someone showing them or would it be someone programming them to do that? No. That's a question. I mean, who are, are you? There's, a, there's another movie, it's called like the 13th Floor or something. Yes. But everybody gets changed. They even like at night while they're sleeping, the whole, the whole family setup can change mm-hmm. to change the outcome. You know, who, who was your husband one night, and your kids could be somebody different the next night. That's a that's and that's dark dark city, isn't it? Yeah, dark city. Yeah, yeah. dark city. Thirteenth floor is good too. And I, and I think about remember remember I told you I have kind of like a theory that all this electromagnetic this radiation that we're you know on us. It's uh oh, I forgot my thought. <laughs> so, um, but like we're being 
I mean, we're being kind of experimented on to right, see. Right. And and I think and I think that it's taking away our memories and our dreams because I read all the books of you know Einstein and all these. They all talk about their dreams. Right. Lincoln, right. Washington, um, um, authors. They all talk about their dreams, and even like um, like coming up with the, uh, equations and formulas. And when I had my kind of out-of-body experience, I saw myself in a Faraday cage. I was going up, and but I was with people, but they knew, uh, they didn't show me who they were. I just stayed in the cage, you know, but they were taking me up, like, in an elevator. But I look now, and I think it was like a Faraday cage. Right. Well, but, but which... we're, we're being so, you know, bombarded in that, I mean, we're losing... Memory. Some people can't even remember what they had to eat the day before. All right. Well, um, let's see. In the live chat in the uh, uh, comp comments, Elaine says, "Utopian society." Yes. And she says, "Is what he reboots into it would seem." Um, yes. Uh, you know, there. You know, comes comes a point well didn't didn't did he re, didn't he go and and he like said you guys are all free but or no you guys all have to find out for yourself um i'm giving you the message well in in the last one in the you know third you, third and final one they're all free when neo needle and thread i offer you that you must learn to sew. when when he puts his um, raises his, you know, spirit above his mind, which is, uh, you know, very sim symbolic in the movie because he it shows his, you know, light body going. And where does he sit? He sits on the right hand of this big light, you know. So that's another Christ, you know, you know, symbolism there. And then, then the uh, you know people in the Matrix, and and in Zion, which is a long story. But anyway, they're all saying that they're free. That they're free. And um, um, let's see, uh, Lane, you said you, you, you say God created a utopian environment in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. The Bible states it was a world of perfection and gave one direction to Adam and Eve, which was not to partake of the fruit of this tree. Adam and Eve disobeyed. Why? Because of free will, or if you will, the consciousness of man, who therefore, in the moment of disobedience, caused sin to occur, then the paradigm shifted into something that was programmed. Well, that's... that's I think, but I think it was more of an allegory when you tell somebody not to do something, they're going to do it. Well... And it's, and it's the price we pay... That's why they actually, say the double-edged sword of everything. Actually, uh, you know, like as far as, um, <laughs> you know, neuro-linguistic programming is mm -hmm. like, if I tell you not to think about a pink elephant, you're going to think about a pink elephant. And that's right. used, that's, kids, they that's say, used oh, so don't often. Do this. And don't um, do this. <laughs> it's it's my theory that that um, that, you know, that it that it was part of the program for sin to enter the world. It's just, it's like you know in the Bible where it says, "And God was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and said, Adam, where are you?" Well, God's all knowing, God's all powerful, God's all present. So why would He ask that? Well, um, it was a rhetorical question. I mean, He, you know. I really don't know because he knew what his response was going to be. So so I really don't know why that that was, but it was, you know, part of the program or if you want to go deeper than than that, then it you know, it could be a program within a program. I mean, there's 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 really no no way of knowing. Well, Once, it's like the little mirrors. It's like the Rush or the Russian dolls. I mean, right, it's everywhere. Right. The symbolism tells you. Once you get into that, it's like, and and, and you see it. I mean, I mean, even you look at it, Men in Black. 
what are the big, you know, they bring the big and then they show you the microscopic, all the light that's there that we can't even see with our own, with our eyes. Right. And as so you say, when, when you were mentioning about the number 33, I did not hear mentioned the Godhead three, God, Christ, Holy Spirit. Well, 33 would, um, 333 would be, well, uh, well, I guess, um, somehow one, 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 uh, 11 for each one or, um, or you say Trinity above Trinity below. Well, 33 is significant for the, um, the uh, 33 vertebrae that we all have, uh, you know, in our spinal column, which, uh, in the Bible, really, when you right look up, at when you look up the word Hebrew meaning for the word tree, you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Believe it or not, look it up and see what it means in Hebrew. It doesn't mean tree. It means spine. <laughs> so the garden, so the garden, therefore, is not talking about a literal garden. It's talking about what? It's talking about the human body. It's talking about where is the tree? In the middle of the garden. Where's your spine? In the middle of your body. How many vertebrae? Thirty-three. Mm-hmm. And when when you get to the thirty third vertebrae, what's next? Your brainstem, the amygdala, or maybe the like magdalen, the magdalen, you know, the amygdala. Um, and then you know we've uh, you know talked about the ark of the covenant being in your skull. Uh, with the mercy seat, I mean, the sphenoid bone looks looks just That's like a, you know, it has wings. Fantastic. Looks like the two cherubim that it talks about in the Bible, and it's it's called the telecircus, um, the um, um, the it's actually the cella tercis, which in Latin means cella mercy tercis, seat. Okay. In Latin means mercy seat which is where it says that the spirit of God would reside in the temple on earth. And what else does it say? It says, says that the temple would be made with, without tools, without the sound of tools. And it is the temple made without human hands. So how's it made? It's not a temple. It's not a literal temple. It's your body. Your body is the temple. Your body is the temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Cause and effect. And the temple, you've got your skull, right temple, left temple, in the middle, you know, you have the the mercy seat, if you want to call it the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark, A-R-K, it should be ARC, the arc, where your right hemisphere and your left hemisphere, there's an electrical arc that connects both of them. When the two shall become one, you shall be whole. Oh, yeah. Then, then you've got real power. When you, when you yeah. integrate the right and left yeah. hemisphere, or Neo mm-hmm. and Smith, see, mm-hmm. it's, it's the same Guys, if this thing. is true, then we have to think, you know, and it's quite possible, and I've seen some evidence of this that showed that we don't know shit. All this has been done like Truman Show, like you're talking about Truman Show, like even erecting, like, I'm talking about even Stonehenge. Right. Okay? Like they have, like, pictures where they showed people actually, like, doing it. You know, mm-hmm. I, I've just seen them, you know, throughout my studies. I, I don't have any proof or nor did I keep them, but um, I will start looking well, because it's interesting well, again. And this, but in everything that we're told could be can just contrived. Right, right. You know? 
Absolutely. And, and I mean, not even, I mean, just as physically. And <laughs> just, just uh, you know, think, think about this, is that, that the, um, that those, those that know that what is contrived, those that know that, if this is in fact a program, which I believe it is, I believe that it is a simulation. It is a test. It's only a test. It is an experience. Yeah, um, I and and um, mm-hmm. just imagine those that know that the power they have over those that don't. And for for example, um, the small you know village of. Renlay Chateau in southwestern France um, that's, that was the headquarters for the Knights Templar back in, gosh, uh, the 1300s or, uh, you know, whatever, a uh, long time ago. Uh, it was actually called Red A back then. It was, a, it was about, the population was about 30,000. Now the population is less than 10. And, but the distance from Renly Chateau to Bethlehem, Israel, is um, 3,141 miles, but nautical miles, 3.141 pi. And that that is something that is, that is inherent in programming is numbers and there are there are certain vortexes there are certain places on the you know the uh, you know, planet that um that are um that have tremendous power there's there's more um accidents or or there's more you know things that happen planes go missing um there's uh, supposedly paranormal activity or just um you know very um strong magnetic um fields and it is they are perfectly uh, uh you know, patterned my um Easter Island where they have the the uh, uh you know monuments and then you know, Stonehenge, and there's places, and it goes up and down, up and down. But it's a perfect pattern. Look up the on uh, you know Google Google um, um, natural you know vortexes on Earth. Look for the you know pictures, and, and you'll you'll see where these are, and they are in perfect alignment perfect distance from each other which is not not by chance but just just to make a long story short and uh we're we're just just about to wrap things up but um is um is the of course uh, you say uh lane you say that the bible was written for the instruction of man that's true that's true um and you say thirty three is made up of two number threes. Um, well, well, well. I mean, if it was three three three, then that that would be God, um, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To me, I mean, I um, personally. How about, I think, two, how about a two family? I I don't know, but I think that 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 there's no. There's no, you know, definite, you know, correct answer. I mean, I think that everybody has their own, you know, perspective. When you double a number in numerology, you double it, the strength of it. You know, when you triple it, you increase the strength of that, the, the number of, in numerology okay. of, of that number. Well, uh, the, uh, the ideal is, is um, that when, when you get, get right down to it, the the Knights Templar they they went and they came back from Jerusalem with 
what they called the Holy Grail, and it was supposedly a cup, and that cup, you know, there are several, you know, that that was supposedly brought back. Okay, well, the Holy Grail is not a cup. It's nothing that is physical. It is, it is... Uh, well, according to the Azimuth, so below, it's both on the physical and the spiritual. Right, but it is... It is information. It is advanced knowledge, and uh, that you know, that matter can be transformed molecule by molecule um, by certain certain different ways, and um, and that the nature of reality is actually an illusion or a lucyon. And um, that that fits right in with the simulation theory, and then, say, Ew. then even like then uh, you can say um, I've heard heard you know some people say ask who told you you exist, and people are like well I exist because I know I do, well. But what if that's part of the programming? I mean, how how would you know if this was a program and you were part of the program? You would think you did. You would think that you existed, but outside of the program, you don't. You don't exist. So that's that's just that's just something to you know put this into context. You know, if you will, is it's very hard for us to step outside of the box and say, okay. That's true. If if I was part of the program, then I wouldn't know. I would think that I did. Just you know, um, which man, that gets into you know, you go on and on and on about that. But I'll I'll just leave you with this. I believe that that it's best you know summed up saying this. You are not where you think you are. And what I mean by that is you think you're here because your body, your you you feel, you taste, you smell, you touch, but that's all your brain. Your brain is providing your nervous systems for providing all of that. It's my contention, my belief that we're not here. Our spirit is here, but we are actually already there, and we've been there. And just just like it says in the movie Dune, over and over and over, the sleeper awakes. And I believe that that's what happens when, when, when we finish this test that we go back and that every problem, every form of negativity that we've had was placed there to cause us to grow, to grow, to go back up and not sink. And, um, that's um that's my belief and um i i i could go on and on and on explaining that but we're we're at the two hour mark so we we will mm-hmm. we will do a part two but that to be condi- continued that's lifting the heart the spirit up causing you forcing you to do that to lift your spirit above your mind and putting the ego to death or in submission to the spirit and and to not be a reaction that's the that's the marriage of you know heaven and earth that is um the new jerusalem if you will um bringing um heaven to earth and um so but anyway um if you have have any questions or you want to um 
add something or or comment after the show you you can uh, send us an email at um the the texturesist podcast at gmail.com um or you can um visit our website at um, www.texturesist-podcast.com and um so Ellen, do you have anything that you want to add um uh, no, I thought it was a great show. I've always, you know, wondered and thought about that. And uh, it, it, especially it's like a big dream, you know, before the tech was out. And, you know, I've had some very incre- just incredible, vivid, lucid dreams that I call out-of-body experiences. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I'm at least dreaming that I'm my body's vibrating vibrating and feeling this certain feeling and I am doing breathing exercises that lift help mm-hmm. me lift my spirit out of my body and so I feel it, you know, and so that's what I call out of body. So whether people say dream, whatever. But I've had so many and I've just literally just had flying dreams. Like it's just as real as I'm sitting here and even more real. You know, in crisp and colors, right. more vivid, right? Than and this. That's exactly what I think is is uh, you know. The and I did. I didn't have anything weighing in my heart. Like there's some terrible stuff happening over there, right? And that my joy is taking energy from somebody else, and mm-hmm. that's what they've uh, tricked us into. Mm-hmm. That in order to have something, you got to take from somebody else, right? And so they make us fight for scraps. We fight each other in cubicles. We fight each other here. We're, we're sad when somebody else makes a sale. And, you know, whatever it is, you know, I, I just see the dynam- dynamics, you know, in so many places. That it's, uh, in many of my travels. But, um, yeah, I definitely think this subject is something to delve into more and, you know, especially to get into things like out of body and lucid dreaming and what science is saying about it now. You know, um, right? Well, very, uh, you know, very, very. It's um, it's uh, it's uh, you know, one thing you know that I started, but uh, you know, didn't uh, you know, finish? And I'll do that real quick. Is Einstein said that that um, that uh, you know, gravity, um, that large you know, planetary bodies. Like large planets, large or you know, you know, massive stars, that mm-hmm. they warped, you know, the space time, you know, the the you know, fabric of space time, and um, but no one could explain gravity, and um, it 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 was said that <coughs> that if if this is, which it more and more, it's. It's being proven that it is a simulation. It says that that um, that where space time is warped with these massive, you know, planetary bodies is just like when your computer processor, when when it's um, processing, you know, too much information, too much data. And it slows down. What does it do? In a way, it warps the. Um, it's it slows down. It slows slows down everything. And what what slows down time? Gravity. Gravity affects, no, gra- gravity affects time. Gravity speeds up. Yeah, speeds up time. Speeds up the time. farther you, that you get away from Earth, the um, the less and less gravity you have. Right. So what 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 does that tell you? The quicker you go, the further you get away from that massive body, which would mean as far as computers, when you lighten the load of the information, your processor becomes starts processing faster and faster, which would which would or or you defrag which would yes, which would fit perfectly with what gravity is um, as far as the planetary bodies and what they're saying now is that that the space time 
continuum, the 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 uh, you know, fabric of space time is actually made up of data. It's it's code. You know, like zeros and ones. It's it's all information, and uh, we we will get into that next time. But this has been this has been really interesting, and um, with with your comments and your participation, we appreciate it. And uh, Jacob, you said you got back, and of course, perfect timing. <laughs> oh man! What now? Uh, um, uh, I put a link up there of numbers, things about three. Okay. They actually say it's ruled by Saturn. Okay. Well, um. I thought that was interesting. Three, so three, it's up three. there on the live chat. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, all right. Well, we're, we're going to call it a night. And um, thank you, everyone, for that took part in the live chat. We appreciate it. And thank um, you, Jacob. Thank you, Elaine. And, uh, Thank you for those of you that are Mona, listening, that, that are listening and didn't take part in the live chat. Um, we encourage you to visit our YouTube page, uh, the Texasist Podcast. Um, please do. And um, anyway, going to call it a night. So good night, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Good night. Peace out.